Everyone is here, under the gun since its inception, dependent upon some unnamed malevolent force on global aspirations. I spent six years as a child, growing not far from a couple of little bombs, bombastic insults, and a few little decorations like a purple unicorn. This is the Christmas dinner, and drugs will not pour through the wall around the world. We also close that internet thing. I don't like it is, because there's too much fighting, too much yelling. I had to make a consequential decision. I stopped the truckload of equipment to protect angels on the head of a pin. We need oxygen right now. We will hunt down and kill the terrorists before we go on and solve everyone else's problems. I will not shed a tear. I used to sit on the porch of our home and listen to my grandfather telling stories as he smoked one of those three daily cigars with our civilized way of life and our European friends and our young, impressionable youth filled with anxiety. I was really blessed. This is why this election is so important. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to read something from uh, this collection that was released in February, of which I have some copies. Uh, uh, so this is about, uh, since Philip introduced me as an adopted New Yorker, I, I used to live in Boston for a year, so this poem is about Boston. Uh, when I come right back. It's called Old City Homecoming. I am the seed that opened its eyes upon the dawn spread by dark blue buses traversing through and breathing as they rear the darkened air of a disquieting night's vacillation between insomnia and sleeping too deeply. I am a sea that was returned to my home known for beds green and brown, spread out across tens of miles with the roof baby blue, and everyone drank the juice and ate fallen piece of one another. And days prior news from social media told me, some of my family and friends moved too quickly in circles and the rest stayed still for too long, calcifying into walls. And on the fast lane here, I banged my head against concrete. Mud and leftover edibles from my ancestors, now gone. They have made it a sea of gray, then sucked up rainwater, and that was why my bus could reach here, bring a tourist to his own homeland, now a theme park for some. Doors were welded shut by animals now live on them, eating out the moss grown on them. How much is this like the graduate years later, denied entry of gates of a building he once lived in and gazed into forbidden knowledge that illusions are real things lasting for a limited period of time. The specialty housing facility that took a tooth from me now resided by many unrelated to past enemies. Layers upon layer, failures that aren't swept aside by success just become a sealed floor. Digging things up require more than one hammer and many more. Collateral damages and no worthy images to be seen, and madness mixed memories with inorganic matters. And dead moss above ground is buried alongside those eating its bodies. I, a seed, burst into life. Okay, uh... So a few days ago, many of you might have celebrated 420. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna actually this poem is how I how I started getting into reading. So <laughs> this is a 420 poem. It's called Jane. A small kiss, and she pushes a slow blowing breeze over my tongue into my mind to flow by and to touch every single cell of my thoughts pushing away some so they get to mingle with their friends farther along the way. And when she does not awake them enough to make words or a song, she teaches a new dance as this wind becomes a spiral, a silent tornado that guides me to unexpected places. She uses her slim fingers painted with nail polish in the color of a spring afternoon to reach into my nostrils and that tickles. For she frolics in rough manners, and if I laugh too hard, I may slumber in exhaustion. 
She caresses and undresses me with the same soft hand always, and nudges on the veil between here and my dreams without stepping in. For she respects boundaries, but sometimes she will ask politely to hide in my dreams when she lives as an outlaw running through all cities and dark alleys on the earth. New York, Boston, Denver, Tokyo, Beijing, and sometimes doesn't clean after herself. <laughs> but otherwise, she treats her host kindly. And on her way, she enjoys company of travelers who push away bushes to make a skylight in the wild, who have chosen to embark on a more trying path to escape from cement surface and wet paint on the white rails and call upon her name. For Jane has many, many names. I will not, never, not forget the day we truly met each other when you turned a well-lit room phone into chirping birds beneath moonlight, eyes still looking for their shadow. something I wrote recently, it's called A Fire in the Backyard. Not turning back and falling for the siren's call, seducing or to offer help in uniform, I am un unimpressed by this conniving, vexing gall attempting to divert my path when I'm informed about the unforeseen calamity back there, expecting me to let you wait to which I scorn, as I shall not reserve any remaining tears behind the curvy road of beer bottle's neck, and only to be blinded by the flame's fell glares. That blaze, however, shall resemble puny flax compared to the incandescent bond between our kernels covered by a thin mantle. Those pecks from your dry lips, from there towards the shore, a sheen shall then illuminate the roots of the golden reeds and then consume my ponderous confusion, confusion clean. I am seeking an escape and a shelter to be freed from not the fire but from a Chinese idiom, to shackles made from threats at home. I shan't accede. I can't imagine sitting in oblivion upon truncated pitch black walls while listening to the snorts and clinks of aluminum. Such sound would be sufficient for my deafening, but this seems fitting for a sad, truncated man that I would be without you. Quite a sickening prospect to conceive. I shall now speed faster than a muted hurricane within my bosom's reach to the little platform where you patiently stand. Let, let's drum louder than the blazing door's crackling screech, and let the bellowing waves open the earth to a beach for us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is called the chimney. A chimney, oh, excuse me. A chimney from my mind's domicile stands tall and slim like a hollow candle with its wick scooped possibly by the hands of mine which spasmed while overextending themselves in a rummage for things no longer wanted. Shrouded by colorless despair, I threw clothes, cloaks, a fedora hat which covered my voyeuristic eye from the greater truth of sunlight, and lies I wore like a translucent corset against wrinkled dermis, all underneath the chimney's square earnest mouth. All of this fed, not to, but to become its soliciting tongue, reaching for energetic vapor in the darkened air, whispering bitter regrets. The odious odor and taste irritates the hard-nosed. Reluctant confessions full of the most filthy, unraveled microscopically by flames moving hands, flames dwarfed in shine by my floor lamp, whose pole cast a tall and slim shadow on the possibility of a sweet orange lightning. If they burn brighter, the chimney cannot contain all of it in its pipes. If they smolder, the chimney cannot stop the pollution for days. If they boil from simmer, only water for sustenance is pushed out and nothing else. Chimney, the holder of trilemmas of my past 10,000 days. Chimney, the only outlet of words left to be spoken on this day. 
Chimney, giver of signals for hope. Chimney, destroyer of signs. Chimney, givers of a cleansing process. Chimney, destroyer of cleanliness. Chimney, giver of dreamy reveries. The chimney, destroyer of dreams. And chimney, no less certainly, the only back door for rising. Wow. This is going to be a short one. Uh, it's called NYC Dialectics. <laughs> Empty subway car, forms of a republic that moves, fragments of thoughts left floating on but not in. The half warmed air mixed with dreams postponed from half stare, from, excuse me, from last starry night due to the high fever shutting down cables which transmit our cell signals. They refuse to converge or converse at the smell of coffee, it's often said. It's only an imaginary number. While the spell of war can make one remember, one right-click, clock tick, click, populate before it's too late. A beep to close the door brings a four. Totality of the empire that never sleeps. Thank you, everyone.